Before I move on to the new prophecy proper, I should probably cover something that I should have last video. INTO THE WILD! This alternate cover occasionally pops up on online retailers, but seemingly no official places. Which makes sense, considering God, this is a mess! Now, I'm no graphic designer. In fact, I think I'm too young to have gotten any experience in that field. But the cover already looks so amateur. The title is in a weird handwritten font that's probably meant to be a stylistic choice but comes across as trying too hard. It is also the only font they use on the cover. Speaking of the style, it's weird. This isn't a book cover, it's a movie poster. And that's not to mention the subtler flaws. The forest at the bottom is meant to contrast with the rest of the cover, but ultimately doesn't take up enough real estate to truly pop. Also, it looks nothing like a forest. Warrior attack takes place in England, not Kenya. I think it's important to note that this image of a forest was taken from a software website. Midnight. Midnight's cover is serviceable. It depicts the travelling cats just together. You can tell it's meant to tie into the book's themes, but other than that, there's not much to it. It categorically has use of silhouettes, but what else does it have? The cover is not bad, but simple. See here. Midnight. You don't need to hear me complain about the reprinted new prophecy covers. They're already infamous in the fandom for how bad they are. See here. Moonrise. The cover depicts the traveling cats traveling through the snow, as well as traveling through. There's also a sharp tooth in the foreground, just kind of looking at them. Generally, this is a good cover, with one of its biggest strengths being its subtlety. Sharp tooth is placed behind the name of the author, which is generally one of the last pages you look at on the cover. This is additionally helped by the three traveling cats being the main focal point of the cover. Speaking of those three, they take up a surprisingly low amount of real estate on the cover, representing how big their journey has become. Also, it looks good, right? I'm not crazy when I say it looks good. Eight here. Moonrise. The color palette is slightly more appealing, but still. Eight here. Dawn! Dawn's cover shows the clans gathered around the lake. Having the end of the book be on the cover is an odd choice, to say the least, as it can more or less rob the story of any state. I guess that the end of Dawn isn't anything unpredictable, but you'd underestimate how much a story can actually convince you of a bad ending. Second of all, this is Dawn we're talking about. There are plenty of big scenes they could have chosen from. After that, there's more things about this cover that just feel wrong. I doubt the shoreline to the lake is actually that deep, and something about the shading in the portrait just rubs me the wrong way. See here. Done! Now this is the color palette. See here. Starlight! I have only now realized that I don't like it when the background is just cats fighting. I get the idea is to draw eyes to your book using intense action. But it's become so ubiquitous that I now prefer covers that break from this mold. That being said, the only other scene they really could have put on this cover is Lethal discovering the moon pool. And a cat discovering a pool is probably going to do less numbers than an actual battle. See here. Starlight! I know I've been passing over these covers with a comment on the aesthetics at most. But why is Misty Foot on the cover? She only does like two things in the book and they are both far from pivotal. Yeah. Well, I One of the biggest problems with this cover is how cluttered it is. There are seven different cats, a badger, and that's combined with the random cliff they're all on. It's supposed to show the scene where the badger attacks the Thunderclan camp, but it's so crowded that you barely even notice that. I don't think it was like the Moonrise cover where they're intentionally hiding Sharp Tooth. I think it's just bad design. Did they? Well, I. No. Sunset. This. Slap. The scene depicts Bramble's claw washing his paws in the lake, which is 
THE iconic scene from the book. Hawk Frost is the cat in the portrait, which is the kind of foreshadowing you only notice if you already know the twist. AKA, the best kind. Also, the aesthetics. They are good. S tier. Much like its predecessor, this is easily the best of the reprinted new Prophecy covers. Ditto. The Last Warrior! The cover to The Last Warrior shows, uh, something. This cover's lighting makes it damn near impossible to tell what's going on in it. It's such an obvious flaw that it makes you wonder how this was the final version. Probably explains the two other versions that are just this cover but with different light. From this we can gleam that the cover features Grace Rack and Millie facing off against a Blood Clan warrior and I'm sorry but lying is just too much of a roadblock for me. Get there. The Lost Warrior! Oh yeah, that was the fifth cover to The Lost Warrior. And this is the only one that doesn't have anything to do with the other covers. I like how clearly Greystripe's expressions communicate what he's thinking. This is the look of a cat who got kidnapped right as his society was getting wiped off the map. Also, I just like the composition. Feels like he's trying to say something. Be here.